everyone just says, oh, I love City of God. Like, this is the only reference of Brazilian cinema and of Brazilian reality that Confess they might know. Confess my favorite film. No, no, and there's nothing <laughs> wrong about the film. Like, in Rio, like, if someone wants to tell you to go to hell and go fuck yourself, like, they will just shout that to your face. Yeah. But here they will say, thank you, you know? <laughs> yeah, and that cuts so deep when you realize what it means. Yeah. What's dating in England like if you've ever dated someone British? I tried to. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> No, not necessarily. I think it depends on many like social aspects. Of e aí, galera? Boa tarde. Oh, 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 oh. Bota tudo. É, bota tudo, bota tudo. Bota tudo. Massa. E aí, galera? <laughs> Welcome to the Brazilian podcast with myself, Stephen, joined with Fernanda Liberty, Modelo. Fotógrafo, fotógrafa, 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 né? Sorry, my Portuguese. And overall trailblazer in the fashion industry here in the UK, in Europe, and worldwide. So, without further ado, let's start the Brazilian podcast. All right. Who was your Who was your inspiration growing up? Like what? Famous people, or not, maybe not even famous, but like you mentioned, your grandmother was a seamstress. Yeah, my great grandma. Yeah. Yeah. So was it your grandma? Was there anyone famous or anyone from this side of the world that you look up to? Maybe now. Not really. No. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, I feel like growing up, you know, as any teenage girl, like I was a fan girl of like various different things. But I think as I grow up, I just understood that there's just normal people that have a cool job. So, yeah, <laughs> you know, you mentioned unfollowing a few famous people or whatnot. Um, just, you know, when you was going through this sort of yeah. surge of unfollowing people that didn't make you feel necessarily good about yourself, which I think is really, really healthy. Yeah, I think it's a mental it's definitely a mental health decision. You know? Yeah, I think it was it was mostly to protect myself, you know, because I think the Internet can be a very toxic place. And sometimes I would really love to not be online at all and just be like in a farm somewhere doing something, you know, but my job requires me to be online and my job requires me to to be there. And I think it's nice, you know, social media has added so many people and so many like, you know, we wouldn't be here today kind of thing, you know, but I think I just trying to keep people that I felt had something to add. And sometimes it's just like a meme page. Sometimes it's just something funny, you know? But sometimes if, even if I don't want to follow someone, I'll just mute their stories or something. You know? I think we all do it, right? Yeah. But I think it's it's mostly just about protecting myself. Yeah. And what am I being fed on, you know? Yeah. Because sometimes, like, even if someone that I have nothing against them, I even admire them, but then just the way that they present things don't align with my values. So... Maybe I don't, and you know, sometimes people take this very seriously, you know, like, oh, they don't follow me. And I'm not going to lie, if it's someone close, like, I will probably get offended too, you know. I think it's one of these silly, shallow things that we get worked up about sometimes. But, yeah, sometimes you don't want to unfollow them, but you just don't want to see exactly what they're talking about every day or something. Like yeah. That. Do you, do you um on your social media platforms, do yeah. you sometimes like receive comments or things that you kind of feel like you have to respond to be it like positive or negative ones yeah sometimes i'm not gonna lie one of my guilty pleasure i have a guilty pleasure not not necessarily guilty because i'm not i don't feel guilty by any type of pleasure <laughs> i think we need to break out of this concepts that we need to feel guilty about pleasures but one thing so i have aries rising if you know anything about star sign which means i like to fight yeah. But I try not to, I try to direct that sort of feistiness and that sort of thing so it doesn't affect my personal relationships. So, you know, I'm not doing that with my family. Sometimes, which I do, because I feel like any sort of different generation, we have different ways of seeing things. So I feel like it's my responsibility as well to teach my parents a little bit because you know how parents can be, you know, like... Mm. But, yeah, I, they hear a lot from me, actually, <laughs> in yeah. various subjects, yes. And 
most of the time they incorporate it, which is in their well, what's lives. What's something that you've had to educate your parents about? Ah, so many things, you know, and I think especially in Brazil, like Brazil is a very racist, is a very classicist society. You know, we still have a lot of horrible things that we inherited from colonialism, from slavery. So sometimes I feel like my parents, they still reproduce a lot of things that I don't agree with. And it's not because they're bad people, it's just because something that they were taught it was okay. You know, there are so many expressions, for example, in Portuguese that are rooted in racism that we didn't even know, that we just normalize them in our everyday life. So as I educate myself, I try to educate them too, you know? Yeah. And I feel like it's no one's responsibility to teach them, but it's mine, you know? It's no one else's responsibility. No, I don't think so. I think it's my responsibility because They've put me into the world and they've gave me all of these tools to gather this knowledge. So I think the right thing to do is sort of come back home and share it, you know? If they will follow it up, then it's about them. But I feel like this is how I help the world yeah. a little bit, you know, sometimes. They, they support you, right? Do they support you with like everything you do and were, were they always supportive in terms of yeah. your career and in terms of like your choices and stuff yeah pretty much yeah. I, they're very supportive yeah with your with your religious choices that come from yeah is that, do they follow in banda as well or? uh not really no my mom she she exposed me to everything you know like with my mom i went to uh, had a Krishna place. I went to a Catholic church. I went to evangelical church. I went to Candomblé, Umbanda. La, la, la. Like my mom pretty much took me everywhere, but I was always free to make my own choices and to decide what felt right for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. If we talk about just some of the challenges that you've yeah. had, mm -hmm. where has your career been most challenging globally? Has it been Brazil? Was it in London? Germany. Germany? Yeah. Why is that? Definitely. Because I think I lived in Berlin for one year and then there is an oversaturation of artists. And I think as well in Brazil, there's a, in, in Berlin, there's a lot of people that are there to party and they're just there to like not grow up pretty much. You know, it's that, you know, if you want to be an adult man in your 40s who has no ambition, no career, no family, no responsibilities, you should move to Berlin, you know, so. More than Rio? Uh, yeah, they, they're, uh, okay. yeah they, they're similar right. uh, in that sense, you know. But I think, I think in, in Rio, at the end of the day, like people still have bills to pay and they will hustle their way out, even if they don't, even if they're not committed to anything, they still need to hustle. Mm -hmm. In Berlin, people don't, a lot of people do need to hustle, but a lot of people just have like generational money or a lot of people get funds from the government. So it's not somewhere that ambition is something that it's common. I think of course, like different cities in Germany are very different, but like I'm talking of my own experience, you know, especially in the arts. I feel like in London, you see a lot of people who even though they are amazing true artists and not, like they realize that they need to capitalize in their works and somehow they need to, you know, make it work or they will have like another job to fund their artistic practice and things like that. You know, I feel like here people hustle a lot more to make it work as in there. Now things are getting more expensive, but at the time, you know, my rent was like a fourth of what my rent is here, you know, so things there are cheaper, but then, you know, I had yeah, there wasn't a lot of paid work and the work that there was, it wasn't very well paid and things like that. So it was difficult. Also the language barrier, you know? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, like London is a very capitalistic city. So like people here want to make money and they want to make things work, you know? So if you have that mindset, it's somewhere that you can make things work, you know? As in Berlin, I felt like as much as I tried to make things work, nothing was happening, you know? Yeah. It's hard for you just based on the fact that your your accent isn't as strong. I'd say it's not as, as strong as most karaoke's. Mm -hmm. um, and your English is really, really good. Yeah. So what 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 kind of reactions do you get from people here? Yeah. When you tell them you're Brazilian. I think they all they always say, "Oh, but your English is really good," and then mm -hmm. I have to say, "Oh yeah, I've been here for ten years." They're like, "Wow, ten years!" And 
yeah, this is usually how the conversation goes, you know. But I don't know. I feel like London is... I think one of the reasons why I stay in here for so long is that because everyone here is an immigrant in some shape or form in London, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, even if you firsthand are, and like, your parents are going to be, your grandparents mm -hmm. are going to be, like, I think London is, like, a huge diaspora place of yeah. so many different people in the world, you know? So I feel like London is definitely more welcoming than maybe other places would be in the UK or in Europe in general. And I feel like London is also the type of place where you can thrive as an immigrant, you can thrive as a person of color, you know? I feel like, of course, there are xenophobia, racism everywhere, but I feel like here people can really... Yeah, it can become successful as, yeah. as far as they need it, as, as, as far as they want to, really. Yeah, exactly. I, and I feel like I have lots of things that... I, sh I think for me, I, I, one thing that I've struggled is because I am very spontaneous and I'm a very loving and caring person. Like I like to hug and I like to be affectionate, you know, and I think sometimes when I first moved in here, like for me, it was hard to understand sort of like the British, like passive aggressiveness, you oh, know, wow. because because in, in Rio, like if someone wants to tell you to go to hell and go fuck yourself, like they would just shout that to your face. Yeah. But here they would say, thank you. You know? <laughs> yeah, and that cuts so deep when you realize what it means. Yeah, exactly. So it took me a while to just be, to sort of, as I said, like learn to navigate British culture and yeah. to sort of navigate the politeness and the sort of passive aggressiveness, but without losing myself. Yeah. Because there's been moments that I got close to it and I was like, okay, it's time to go to Brazil. <laughs> you know, when I feel like I'm starting to slip, then I go home. Yeah. Do you, do you I mean, I asked that, I asked about, you know, how does it, has it, what happens when you tell people you're Brazilian? Yeah. Because, um, at least from my eyes, which is a perspective that's blurred because I lived in Brazil. Yeah. And, well, yeah, when I tell people that I'm from London or I'm English or I'm British yeah. or whatever, when I'm in Brazil, when I'm in mm -hmm. Rio, when I'm in Salvador, their reaction is normally like, oh, wow, and I'm quite embraced. Yeah, you know, I almost feel quite special yeah. in those moments. Um, sometimes I don't say it because I don't want to feel that special. If I'm yeah. in a place where I just like, you know, I don't want any attention. Yeah, I don't want to have to explain why I'm here. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, but it also comes with a lot of the things that people associate with England. They ask me about yeah. the Queen. They ask me about Notting Hill. Yeah. The Beatles. You yeah. know. Um, so when people find out that you're Brazilian, what sort of things do they associate <laughs> yourself mm. with or do they try to attach on to you? I think you're touching a really good point now. I think uh, many people, they always try to relate to it at some sort. So they would say like, oh, I love Brazil or I've been or my yeah. whatever cousin. Yeah, my cousin. My, yeah, my cousin's or, in Europe. So yeah, you, yeah. Must, you must know him. Yeah, no, yeah. but sometimes that happens that <laughs> yeah. you do know them, you know, because, but yeah, I think a lot of people, they try to relate in some shape or form. And I think if someone is very, not very ignorant, I wouldn't say ignorant, but if they're very like clueless about Brazil, they'll say like Neymar or some, some shit. Yeah, like this, Pele, you know? Neymar. Yeah, which I'm like, really, but <laughs> that's it. But I think one hook that I think it's really important when you said, you know, when you meet British Brazilian people and they ask about the Beatles and they ask about Notting Hill and they ask about the Queen, like this is the vision that the UK sells for the rest of the world, especially mm -hmm. for the global south. And I think especially in a country that is not part of the Commonwealth, like Brazil, because I think if you're part of the Commonwealth, it's a closer relationship. And uh, you, you hate them. You hate, you, hate, you hate them more passionately, maybe, oh, you right, know, yeah, or something. Yeah. But like in Brazil, we don't have a close relationship, and so it's like we're not a former colony of the UK, nothing like that. So it's it's a distant re relationship in some shape or form. But we do have this view that there's no poverty in the UK. You know, we mm. do have this view that everyone here is white, maybe or Indian. You know, because or even if they don't know it so much, so there's this conception that. Everywhere in London, in the UK, it looks like West London. We all live in Downton Abbey where, you know, we see the Queen, you know. So it's this very, like, posh and white idea of what the UK actually is. Mm -hmm. And then in Brazil, 
everyone just says oh i love city of god like this is the only reference of brazilian cinema and of brazilian reality that confess they might know. my favorite film no no and there's nothing <laughs> wrong about the film like it's it's one of the most amazing brazilian mm. films ever done and everything that it shows there it's not a lie you know it's it's so many parts of the brazilian reality but brazil has so much more to offer than that and brazil is a lot bigger than what happens in rio as well you know so this is the problem that i have like the uk the united states they're very good in propaganda and they're very good in like advertising themselves as these super developed and these super advanced places where they're not really you know the united states is full of poverty there's full of violence so is here mm. you know and sometimes like when people ask me like oh but what about the uk government i was like babe the uk government is not that better than the brazilian government they just have more money to play around but they're as corrupt they are you know they can be as negligent they could be you know as racist and like systematically racist as the brazilian government so this is something that annoys me a little bit, you know, because when people think of Brazil, they think about hot women and violence and football, you know, but I know that my country is so rich. And of course, this is also part of Brazil, but there's so much more to offer, as in this country has the privilege of just being of just showing the good bits. Yeah. As in when people think about Brazil, they always think about the worst of it first, you know. The worst of it, you mean the violence, the hot women and the... No I'm, not, no, I'm not saying the worst, but, you know, like yeah. the violence and all of the horrible things that we know that happens every day in Brazil. But there's a lot of horrible things that happen every day here, too. Yeah, know? definitely. Um, yeah. And I just I, I remember it happens a lot. It happens a lot to a lot of my friends, female friends, where they're almost a little bit. I'll say they've, they've had experience where they felt like they've been sexualized because they're Brazilian. It happens yeah. with friends of mine whilst they were in Brazil, yeah, that yeah. my friends who were gringos, that mm -hmm. were you know from the States or London or whatever, yeah. would sort of come in with this sort of idea. Um, is that something that you kind of battle with where guys just make some kind yeah. of assumptions that you might be, you know? Yeah, definitely. And I think sometimes like, I don't, depending on who it is, of course, but sometimes, yeah, when they ask you, like, where are you from? And then I say Brazil, you see, like, a shift, mm. you know, being a bit like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. You're a guy. Maybe you know more what, what that means, you know. But I've noticed sometimes from men that it's be like, oh, not oh, but like, oh, you know, the sort mm. of like, yeah, I feel I feel like that does happen. Yeah. But, you know, at the end of the day. It's not my problem. Yeah, you don't you don't have to deal with that. I mean, how do you deal with that? No, I when have it to happens? deal with it, but then it becomes a good filter as well. You know, yeah. like oh, you're just one of those assholes, whatever. Okay. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because that's the thing. I think there's a lot of foreign, like there's a lot of English people, there's a lot of European people in America. They have like Brazil fetish. Yeah. You know, you constantly meet guys and women who will like serial date only Brazilian women. Yeah. But I think, you know, sometimes like you do connect with the culture is something that you feel at home. No, no, no. But many times is this like exotification of what a Brazilian woman actually is. But then once they are confronted with the reality of what it means to be in a relationship with us, then it's too much or it's too hard or they don't understand how we operate in terms of like, oh, why do you talk to your mom all the time? Why do you always have people staying over in our house for free? Or why, you know, why do you need to? You know, all of these things that are very Brazilian. Mm -hmm. So I think sometimes like people fall in love with a concept. Yeah. And then once reality hits, they're like, oh, no, dating a Latina is too hard <laughs> or whatever, you know. Yeah. So I think there is this sort of stereotype and this sort of. Yeah. Yeah. What's what's dating in England like if you've ever dated someone British? I tried to. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> No, not necessarily. I think it depends on many like social aspects of this person's life, I guess. But I'm someone that, as you said, like, I'm, I'm spontaneous. I'm very Brazilian. So sometimes it can clash mm. very front if someone is like very traditionally British in their way of seeing the world and operating. Like I've had strong cra crashes and clashes in relationships I like, like that. that. Crushes and crashes. Yeah, and I think, for example, like, being late, you know? 
Like I, I've always been a really late person, especially being from Rio. And since I moved here, I've improved so much, you know, like if I have mm -hmm. to be on time, somewhere and it, I you know if it's for work if it, you know you it's know one if of the it, reasons I stayed in Brazil yeah I was allowed to be as late as I wanted yeah exactly you know and I love that to be honest some but I feel like I've had problems with literally like if I was a little bit late and I did let them know people would be like oh no I'm walking out like I'm not waiting for you kind of thing you know yeah. like that did happen to me before here wow. but then as I said it's a good filter because like if you're not willing to wait 20 minutes for me on the first date this relationship is never gonna work babes because you're gonna spend probably the rest of your life waiting for me and if you're not okay with that then it's not gonna work out you know <laughs> but we say good things are worth waiting for so you know but good line <laughs> you, know, it's you true. said this to the person I did yeah and then what blocked or yeah blocked oh, well. <laughs> blocked yeah <laughs> but that's the thing and, and but i think now like more and more i end up meeting people who are british and are also late or you know like i think more and more like that sort of happens but whenever someone in here tells me like oh no like take as much time as you need to take your time i always say like mm, famous last words yeah you know? exactly <laughs> don't say that you're brazilian babes i'm gonna show up four hours late with yeah no when i was in like i'm 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 sort of on record as being late always and um, yeah. people always used to say to me you're english english time english time yeah and i'd be like i'm nigerian yeah <laughs> like, exactly. what are you doing no yeah. um, but sometimes especially when i'm working in sao paulo for example i try to overcompensate yeah i try to be more british in sao paulo a little bit just because people in rio had a re have a really bad reputation for being unprofessional for being late and i'm not disagreeing Mm -hmm. We are, sorry. So I try to like fight the stereotypes. So if I'm doing a set day in Sao Paulo, I'm the first person to arrive. Oh, good. You know, because yeah. yeah. I try to break the stereotype. But sometimes I don't want to, but yeah. <laughs> sometimes I'm just late. It happens, it happens. So I just want to say a massive thank you to Fernanda Liberty for joining us today on the Brazilian podcast a great insight into life uh, across the pond and over back in Brazil, mm -hmm. where 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 is home um, in between these two places. Um, mm -hmm. It's been very nice, interesting listening to you talk about that and your career. And yeah, I just wanted to say a massive thank you. And to everyone who is still here listening, I just want to say obrigado for you too. So obrigado, até logo and peace